guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you when to harvest your winter squash, especially if you wanna have that winter squash be able to use root cellaring techniques or just have the longest shelf life possible on that. So as you can see, I'm obviously out in the garden and I'm out here with my squash and we have not had our first killing frost yet. It's due to come any day now. Um, but the squash are kind of, especially a lot of my pumpkin plants are at the end. And as long as you don't have a killing frost, I like to leave my plants, I should say my squash, on the vine as long as possible so that they can get fully matured and they're easier to cure when you have them fully matured. So of course, I just harvest for what we're gonna be using fresh and I don't worry about it. But when it comes to storing them, and when I store mine, we do not have a basement, I don't have a garage, and I don't have an old fashioned root cellar, though that's something I would love to be able to put in. I'm just storing them on the shelf in my house. So you can use these techniques, of course, if you do have any of those things where it's gonna be cooler temperatures uh, in a more controlled environment, like a root cellar, which a lot of times a garage, depending on the time of year and basements provide, then that's gonna just help prolong it. But these tips can be used even if you're just using them in your own pantry and even in just the kitchen shelves inside the house. So this first squash that I'm gonna be showing you is a spaghetti squash. And this is when they're great to pick for their fresh eating, but I ideally would let this stay on the vine longer, and I'll show you one of those versions, when I'm looking at curing it and using it for a root cellar type storage. So this one is not fully mature as far as going for root cellar, but if you knew you were having a hard killing frost coming in, you don't want these to freeze and then thaw because that is definitely going to affect the way it's going to store on the shelf. So you can see that the vine here, especially the stem is still green, it's kind of like a, a, a yellowish green color, but this is still green. And the outside of the skin, one of the ways that you can test it is to take your fingernail and kind of push the skin. And so it doesn't pierce it really easy, but there is a little bit of an indent. The stems have little tiny spines on them. So instead of just breaking them off, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a knife. You can sometimes just start to make a cut and then sometimes it's easier if you just go ahead and break it off right there from the vine. And I didn't bring my gloves out. So just be careful. Sometimes you get the little spines in here. But what I wanted to show you is you wanna make sure when you're removing it that you actually leave this stem on. You wouldn't wanna break it off right here. And the reason for that is when you have the stem on, and this is true for any fruit, so apples, cherries that have a stem, if you break this stem off, then you're allowing oxygen to enter in and it's going to break down that much faster. So by leaving the stem on, you're actually prolonging the shelf life of this. So this next one's kind of like the in-between stage where you've got the stem that is not all the way green, but it's not all the way brown. And it's definitely, especially with spaghetti squash, but this is true of all your winter squash, the more vibrant the color, so the darker it is, meaning it, that it's closer obviously to maturity and that the outer skin is gonna be harder, which is what we want for that long-term shelf storage. So on this one, the stem is almost all the way brown. There's just a little bit of yellow color in there. And then you can actually see between these two, the difference in the color. This one's definitely more yellow and this one's more pale. So this is just kind of at those different stages, but these are both totally fine eating wise. It's just for those shelf storage long-term of the signs that you're looking for. So you can see this guy is very bright and yellow and you can actually see where the outside of the skin here has had a little bit of scarring and poking when it was more immature, just being out in the garden. And the stem here is brown. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this off of the vine. Of course, leaving our stem intact. And so this guy has pretty much done all of its curing and maturing out here while it's still attached to the vine where the other ones haven't. But one of the signs that we look for, of course, this one's already got it, is we wanna take a fingernail or something that would be about the same hardness and press it against there. And this is not leaving an indent. So just a little tiny mark, but it's not even actually really indented. So this will only need to cure, which just means we're gonna dry it off uh, wipe it down so it doesn't have the wet and the dirt on it and then let it set in a dry area for oh usually, sometimes up to a couple weeks for that skin to fully cure but and then it's fine to move into the root teller root cellar type storage if you have it or for me it's just simply going to go on my pantry shelf and one of the cool things is spaghetti squash has the longest 
shelf life for me. I can have this just on the shelves, open shelves in my kitchen, and I've had them last up to six months. Whereas pumpkin, those only usually last for me, usually about six to eight weeks when it's just at regular room temperature. So if they're really dirty, I like to just give them a big spray with a hose and I love these metal baskets. I don't even know where we got these, but they work so good when you're bringing in produce from the garden and you need to give them a big washing. So I like to, you can do it in the sink. I just find it really easy to use a garden hose on these. One of the things I like to do when I am curing my squash and I do this with any of the winter squash, so acorn squash, uh, butternut squash, these are spaghetti squash, same thing with my pumpkins anything in the winter squash that you're gonna be curing, which you should if you plan on doing it for long-term shelf storage or even keeping it just longer term in the fridge, this is gonna help them last longer. So we already established we're leaving the stems on these, we removed the dirt. And then the other thing that I like to do is to take some vinegar. Now this is my homemade apple cider vinegar. You can use store-bought vinegar. Um, you can, obviously you can use white vinegar if you have it, but because I have this and it's homemade, which means it's basically free, um, I'm gonna be going ahead and using this. And if you wanna learn how to make homemade apple scrap cider vinegar, which is what I've got here, I will make sure and link to that below this video because I do have a tutorial so you can learn how to make your own. So I'm just gonna dampen this and I'm just gonna use a regular paper towel. You can use uh, you know, whatever towel you want. I don't mind using a paper towel every now and then for this type of work. So just get it damp with the vinegar. And this is still a little bit wet, so I'm just kind of giving these a, a little a bit of a rub down, especially on any parts that might have a little bit of extra dirt on them. And this is just to help remove any of the bacteria and the dirt where bacteria and decay could start to set in. So that's basically why we are using vinegar. And you can see these, my paper towel is still pretty white, so I don't have a ton of dirt on these, which just give, giving them that quick rinse with the hose helps. Now this one's a little bit dirtier. And he's got, this one has got a little bit of scab right here, but it's hardened over and it's already started to cure a little bit. So I'm just gonna take the vinegar part here and just kind of get into those nooks and crannies where there's a little bit of dirt, just to make sure that we get that removed because those are the parts, if you don't get that dirt off of there, uh, that will start to break down and decay the fastest. Okay guys, so as you can tell, my onions are finishing up curing. In fact, I'll probably getting those braided this weekend. And this is my curing spot. Now it's rainy and misty and it's a little bit cool and chilly as I'm shooting this part when we're cleaning them. But over the next few days, we're supposed to get a few more days of sunshine. So same thing, anytime you're curing vegetables, you don't wanna cure them in direct sunlight. And so this portion where I've got the onions and, and more towards the house, we have enough of a covered porch here, even in full sunlight, that when they're back here, they won't be in direct sunlight. So we want good airflow. So because this basket is so open, I'm gonna just leave them sitting here for now. We'll let them dry off um, after they've had their bath and their vinegar rinse. We'll let those dry and then I will just leave them here and I will probably lay them out on the screen after I get those onions braided. And if you were curious on how to pull and cure your onions, I'll also make sure um, and put that in the video description below so that you can go and check out that video as well. 
If you enjoyed this, make sure that you hit subscribe and that little bell so you get notified every time we put out a new video. And if you want more tips on knowing when to harvest and the best time to harvest your different garden produce, especially with those extra tips when it comes to preserving them and using them in your pantry and home food storage, then you're gonna wanna check out my new book, The Family Garden Plan. It's not available yet. It doesn't actually publish until January, but I've got some pretty amazing pre-order bonuses that you're gonna wanna go and check out. So you can check that out at familygardenplan.com. Let me know in the comments below if you are growing inner winter squash and what your favorite varieties are and if you have got any tips that you use for at harvest time and especially if you're curing and storing them in the pantry using root cellar type techniques and if you're already doing this i would love to know on your different varieties what's the longest you've had yours stored and it still stays good okay thanks so much i'll see you in the next video